Bonjour et bienvenue à cette conférence de presse organisée dans le cadre de l'Assemblée générale annuelle d'ACI Monde et ACI Afrique. Merci d'être avec nous aujourd'hui. Thank you for being with us today. We welcome you to this press conference organized for ACI Africa and ACI World Annual General Assembly. Um, we will do uh, 25 minutes of uh, uh, questions and answers. Uh, we will, um, uh, please, uh, before asking a question, we'll be kind to mention your, day, your name and as well your outlet. So, we will give you a with your interview of questions de 25 minutes. Merci de bien mentionner votre nom et média avant de poser votre question. Alors, sur notre panel, Madame Habiba Lacalèche, est directrice générale, Office national des aéroports. Monsieur Emmanuel Chavez, président ACI Afrique. Cher Emmanuel Alosni, PDG en Oman um, Airports Management Company et président ACI World. Monsieur Ali Tunsi, secrétaire général ACI Afrique. Et Monsieur Luis Felipe de Oliveira, directeur général ACI World. Juste avant la période de questions, Madame Habiba Lacalèche aimerait s'adresser à l'audience. Bienvenue à vous, journalistes, et merci d'avoir accepté d'assurer la couverture de, de cet événement. Eh bien, nous sommes à votre disposition pour répondre à toutes vos questions. Alors, nous prendrons la première question, le first question. Thank you very much for uh, the programs and events, also for the event, uh, for uh, the deliveries. Uh, I would like to ask, uh, I have seen that uh, you have mentioned a lot the upskilling and reskilling of the people that are working in the industry and giving uh, uh, the right motivation for the people to remain in the industry. So I would like to ask uh, all of you, what is the strategy from the ACI perspective? Uh, in improving the training and uh, especially the upskilling and the reskilling uh, at the airports. Thank you very much. It's a very good question. And uh, as you know, we've been uh, through the pandemic. And during the pandemic, uh, there was, uh, you know, uh, uh, at the beginning, less training. I mean, no uh, events at all. No participation but uh, what we did instead is uh, doing like online training uh, uh, online uh, uh, participation and that really made lots of uh, good progress with the with the staff uh, they, st uh, they, they were working from home so it, it really worked uh, good for both sides what we did is uh, uh, just to uh, recap on uh, 2016 and 17 before we opened uh, Muscat Airport, the newly uh, airport in 18 and, and 19, we opened Muscat, Salala, and Dokham Airport. We have invested heavily in the uh, 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 human uh, capital. Uh, that really resulted that uh, we've uh, attracted uh, very good uh, talent from the market, whether local or international. Uh, to retain that talent, you need always to, you know, invest in them. Otherwise, they leave. Like uh, Mr. Qadri said uh, in the last, uh, you know, conference, that you know, uh, if you don't pay good your staff, they uh, they eventually leave you. And also, there is always uh, a period for uh, staff when they get actually to a certain limit, they start looking for somewhere else, unless you actually do restructuring of your. Uh, structure of the company and you make sure that you open opportunities for those people they will always leave so you need to invest in uh, training you need to invest in uh, in uh, uh, the uh, uh, packages of your staff and you need to always build opportunities for upscaling uh, your team otherwise they leave uh, the, the most challenging thing i have uh, at, at oman airports is uh, the average age of the staff is between 20 and 30 years and you know young young uh, uh, 
uh, camps, they always either make you busy or you make them busy. So we always tend to make them busy. Thank you very much. It's a very important question for us in Africa. Um, we, before um, the pandemic, we already started a very comprehensive program uh, in uh, reskilling and upskilling um, African uh, workforce of the airports. Uh, because uh, we, in our discussions, we realized that uh, that it's well known that there is a lack of expertise in Africa. So the upskilling is to enhance and empower the, our employees in all airports in Africa to make sure that they can reach a stage which can fit with the requirements of uh, certification of airports, requirements of making the airports become more performing, and uh, making sure that that is the base why we have developed a program called a African Airport Development Program. Okay, so the African Airport Development Program is a program uh, to which one of the main pillar is giving cheap training. Okay, uh, we our our cost for training in Africa, for example, let us take a two weeks program. It is very cheap. It's the cheapest you can find, okay? And uh, what we are doing is to make sure that the training becomes accessible. Okay? In aviation, in general, the, the, the training tends to be expensive, but we are massifying to our members, make sure that the access to training not be a problem. In some cases, we signed memorandums with the airport companies who are our members. And through the memorandum, we, uh, we, we design a, with them a program for training as a complement of uh, uh, the need of certification of the airport, for example, or the need of meeting with the requirements in environment, in security, in other fields. So through that memorandum, airports are benefiting in, uh, uh, in massive training, okay? We do training in-house, and during COVID, we did a lot of online training, okay? And that, that program is becoming big and big because our extension of courses, it's now expanded, and we are really very happy because we, in a very short term, at least we overcome the lack of expertise in Africa because this is a program where Africans are training Africans and uh, we are building, at the same time, uh, good employees, good trainers, and experts in the aviation. This is the crucial point of uh, the debt program. And the debt program is being done in a partnership with the SCI World, and uh, we have a huge good support from SCI World to implement such a program. Thank you very much. Another question? Yes. Please, your, uh, your name and, uh, and Thank you. Thank you very much. So, I'm Anna Radha Shama from Media uh, Partner of ACI Africa, and uh, I'm also an aerospace uh, editor. Uh, there is a lot of, of uh, talk about, uh, discuss about sustainability and also digital transformation, but how should we have all airports on the same level playing field when we know that there is, in many airports, especially in Africa, we have a lot of issues like, like safety and lack of funding, so how can we all collaborate to work together so that all airports have the same access to these uh, new challenges? Thank you. A uh, very good question. And uh, um, what we what we do, we have uh, we're the, the only uh, industry sector that already looked for the decarbonization of the sector for the last 11 years with the airport carbon accreditation. 
That's why when we even didn't have the targets that we discussed about it, the net zero carbon emissions by 2050, we are already working in a program to decarbonize, to decarbonize our, our airports. And that this program is also well developed in Africa, well developed around the world, with more than 400 airports in different parts of the world. Just to remind that we have 2,000 airports in the globe that are part of SCI, and they represent 96% of the global traffic. Having 400 airports in the program is very important. The second thing we need to find ways that you support these small airports. We have a tool called ACERT that is free of charge for our members, and they use to calculate their own emissions. Basically, it's the first step to reach the level one of decarbonization. The other levels, of course, we need to have the support for the governments. Mainly, the main, part, the main issue with the grid of uh, the decarbonization and effort is the energy. That's why the energy provided is a big issue to the airports decarbonize. And we need to find a ways that the government support the decarbonization. The government supports the investments that we need to do in certain ways with incentives, with the policies that help us to do that. And I think that we are very well aligned in terms of with ACI Africa as well to look these tools and how we can help with the training, with the uh, capacity building, uh, and, and how we can bring these airports in a different level in terms of decarbonization as well. It's something that comes to stay, it's something that comes to our future, is our responsibility to take uh, this as, as, a, as a task for us. And we are very proud that the ACI was the first organization in the world as well that uh, uh, set a net zero carbon emissions by 2015 in June 2021, including all uh, the five independent regions that we have together with ACI World. Thank you. Thank you, Philip. In fact, uh, I just want to add one, uh, one more thing is about uh, Africa. Uh, through uh, our members, they have um, studies, and we know that there is a lack of culture of sustainability in Africa. And this lack of uh, uh, culture uh, means lack of expertise, mainly. So, uh, as all together, uh, we just launched um, this period of time a new initiative uh, to train and to have expertise uh, through our members. So uh, we just launched uh, the, uh, with our uh, business partner uh, a platform to give uh, courses on uh, environment and sustainability. It's, as uh, my president said, it's accessible to everyone, very um, uh, reasonable cost, and also uh, easy to, to access, looking that it's online, mainly online courses, and with a uh, few uh, in-job training. Thank you. Je juste peut-être peut rajouter un tout petit mot, parce que euh, la CI a le programme euh, Airport Carbon Accreditation, qui est un programme qui est très intéressant, en tout cas auquel l'OMDA a adhéré. Et on a déjà deux aéroports qui sont Casablanca, Francis et Marrakech, qui sont D'abord, ils ont été accrédités il y a quelques années niveau 1, ils viennent de passer niveau 2. On a d'autres aéroports qui sont accrédités niveau 1 et donc on est en train d'augmenter notre niveau d'accréditation année après année et tout cela s'inscrit évidemment dans l'objectif d'atteindre le net zéro d'ici 2050. Donc c'est un programme qui permet de structurer un petit peu la démarche au niveau de l'ensemble des aéroports à travers, comme mes collègues l'ont bien dit, un, un ensemble de formations. Thank you very much. Do we have another question? Hello. Hello, my name is Max. Uh, I work for Mumberger Airport Information. Um, I have a question, I think, for Madame Lacache and Mr. Tunzi and Charles, also about sustainability. Do you think uh, the continent of Africa also has some lessons to uh, teach airports elsewhere on other continents. Do you have some expertise to, uh, Mr. Tunzi uh, just mentioned that there's still a lack of uh, maybe uh, some gaps in the culture to, to catch up, but do you think maybe uh, knowing that the, the challenges that Africa has, but also maybe the flexibility that I know in Africa, um, uh, that, that there are 
things that you can share with airports elsewhere. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice. Uh, good uh, question. In fact, uh, we can share solutions. African solution. So um, one of the examples that we can share is about uh, Mombasa. Uh, one uh, Mombasa airport, they create a chain of uh, power based in, uh, in solar. So it's a very, very uh, special project, the first, I think, in, in the world, where every the, the chain of um, energy from uh, for the aircraft is green. So um, it's very special. I don't have the, the, uh, the details, but uh, what I understand is uh, from um, the source, which is uh, green, uh, green energy, to the aircraft, all the chain um, in parallel or sometimes just to support the, the regular energy comes from uh, the green sources, mainly solar. This is one. Uh, Morocco also, I know maybe uh, Mr. Mahlej can, uh, can give us more information, is in, uh, in, um, uh, on the way for one of the biggest uh, source of green uh, energy. Uh, and uh, OMDA is playing a big role. In fact, everyone knows that Africa is uh, the source of green energy, looking at the weather we have, uh, the, the land and everything is green. Now we need some, uh, as I said, some culture, some initiative, and with that we will may maybe the power of tomorrow of green energy, the power of the world of green energy. Thank you. J'aimerais peut-être juste rajouter que uh, Moindia uh, vient de lancer une étude pour uh, améliorer l'efficacité énergétique. Euh, au niveau de ces aéroports et également étudier la possibilité d'introduire de l'énergie euh, re renouvelable euh, au niveau d'un certain nombre d'aéroports. On a déjà commencé à le faire, d'ailleurs l'aéroport de Marrakech est un exemple puisqu'on utilise pas mal de cellules photovoltaïques pour pouvoir produire une, une partie de l'électricité et ça, ça marche très très bien, donc euh, c'est un, un bel exemple L'architecture également de l'aéroport de Marrakech, si vous, si vous l'avez remarqué, la, double peau, la façade à double pot qui permet de réguler la température à l'intérieur du terminal. Et, et donc ça permet de, 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 de consommer moins d'énergie, particulièrement pendant la, période, pendant la période estivale. Il y a beaucoup d'initiatives en tout cas qui ont été initiées depuis longtemps au Maroc et, euh, et que nous sommes en train d'accélérer tout dans le but d'atteindre l'objectif assez challengé et assez ambitieux donc de notre secteur de l'aviation qui est le net zéro. Bien entendu, on travaille aussi sur toute la partie consommation d'eau, réduction de la consommation d'eau, qui est extrêmement importante parce que le Maroc connaît aujourd'hui un stress hydrique et donc tout le monde, en tout cas tous les acteurs au Maroc sont mobilisés autour de la réduction de la consommation de cette ressource rare d'autant plus que la demande pour l'eau est en train d'augmenter dans les grandes villes du Maroc et, euh, et les statistiques, les prévisions montrent une baisse des précipitations. Donc tout le pays est en train de se mobiliser pour pouvoir euh, trouver tous les moyens possibles et imaginables pour pouvoir euh, réduire justement la consommation donc, de l'eau. Donc ça s'inscrit également dans la logique globale de l'optimisation de l'énergie. Thank you. That is a, is a fascinating question. I know it may be three speakers to bring the, the answer, but I think I would like to go back to the example that Ali bring from uh, the situation of Mombasa. That is a very interesting project. And uh, that comes with the partnerships as well, how we can get funds to have these projects work. And this project, for example, in uh, Mombasa is a project that was financed by uh, the European Union, EASA. And uh, we create even a, a, a paper that was announced that was uh, uh, promoted last uh, two weeks ago, if I'm not wrong, uh, that uh, is uh, about this study of the case. That was one case in Africa that, as Ali mentioned, turns an example to the world. That's why it's very nice to see that. It's very nice to see the partnerships that you see in different parts of the globe, how we can get funds. Uh, one of the questions is how to invest in the region. And these partnerships are very important. 
the second point that I would like to mention is that uh, I try to play a key role on the, all, this, all, the, all the issues linked with the aviation sector. Uh, I can come out with an assembly now, that every two years we have this assembly, and uh, this assembly came out with the very important results for the whole industry, for the whole sector. How we can bring that to the reality now is will be our task together with the governments. And we work in kind of create like a centers of excellence in training in different parts of the world. And we have here in Morocco, we have uh, Mr. Kadri here from Istanbul that was the newest ones. That, and we have one uh, in Singapore that is this uh, focusing training on sustainability as well. And what we do as well is kind of uh, pair reviews that we call the apex. We have the apex safety, apex security, and apex environmental as well. That you bring professionals from different parts or different airports to discuss and uh, give a, pro, a, a, a plan for that specific airport and what we need to work now and together with Africa, how can we make these plans in the reality. We use a fund that is come from the ACI fund uh, that is another institution that is linked with the ACI with a different board to invest especially in Africa, Latin America and Pacific Islands. And we have a strong idea to invest more to bring these opportunities for Africans, for Latin Americans, for Asians, to have training and to have this development for free as well. That's why it's a kind of alignment that we have, the working together, uh, world, regions, ICAO, ACL world, regions, to help, to develop and help to implement uh, these important things that will make the change for the future. And I completely agree with Ali. The potential of Africa is huge. Uh, is a land of, uh, uh, as presented by uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, Fungi this morning, is a land that can have many countries inside, uh, and we have 50 million people living here, but only less than 2% of the traffic. That's why, how we can turn all this in benefit of aviation, in benefit of connectivity, in benefit of the communities that we serve to bring social economic development for the region as well, and the green factors are essential to have a development of Africa, and again, together, working together, very stronger, governments, airlines, airports, because we will have the whole ecosystem alignment with an objective that will bring all the things better for the region at all. Thank you. Sure, absolutely. We have all before, we have another video to ask a We've been talking about unleashing the potential of Africa and uh, we saw also there is another uh, very important aspect is that to open the skies of modernization and uh, that's also going to have a lot of benefit for, the, for, for airports, for their businesses and for airlines, for the whole ecosystem. So how could all the stakeholders uh, work together, not only uh, you know, relying on governments or regulators. So how could we just bring our force together, hook everybody on board, to just make that a, a more rapid pr process for the benefit of Africa, especially to have more intra-African connectivity? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, in fact, before coming with a proposition, that uh, we need to really to characterize what is happening currently in Africa. Um, there is effort from the governments toward or engaging to, to signing agreements to liberalize the airspace and to make uh, the air transport in Africa as a very important tool and uh, a kind of uh, venture for so many people who are not able to fly currently. And um, another aspect uh, to be overcome from the liberalization is um, a lack of connectivity. It was said, uh, I flow from Maputo through Doha, Doha, Casablanca, and come to Marrakech. So can you imagine how long there was the, the flight? So, uh, meaning that the problem of connectivity in Africa is a very serious problem, and uh, the governments are already doing it. 
Because the government, what's had to do is to create an umbrella for us to work. But it seems that there is still no color, enough collaboration at the industry to realize and uh, capitalize those agreements. Okay, the sad term is the last one because there was a Yamasuku which we have been telling every meetings we had about Yamasuku, but nothing was being made uh, throughout achieving Yamasuku decision. But uh, now there is sad term. I think our level of conscience about the need of connectivity in Africa is uh, already high, and uh, it is time to make sure that the industry collaborate more, okay? One, one, one aspect of, uh, I normally use to give as example is that uh, air route links at minimum two airports, okay? Links minimum two airports to have an air route. But uh, who sit with the moon to discuss a strategy between two airports to start with a route? We can start from there. Let us sit as airport first, discuss how can we strategize a route to be attractive for airlines, to make sure that that route will start anytime, because it's easier then to sell the route to the airlines to start. But to, it's also very important to sit with the airlines and make sure that they change their nationality there should be a point whereby we need to talk with the airlines to change their strategy based on the profit making to a massification of air travel. Because that is where we all going to benefit. Because if we have more people flying, airports will benefit, airlines will benefit. With the current size, no one will be profitable and we will be pointing fingers. Okay, because uh, the, 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 the charges from airports are very high, but the problem is not that. And it was said by Adifunki, only 100 um, million out of the 1.4 billion Africans are flying. In marketing, it's very easy to identify what is the potential for air travel in Africa. How are we addressing that potential? This is a very important point. And I was, I used to joke saying that uh, one of those days there should be an agreement. And I think there is a starting point already with the unification of passports, okay? To make one passport for Africa. Make Africa a domestic market, okay? From uh, Mozambique, which is my country, to South Africa, we are flying international with the taxation for international, with the passenger tax for international. If we make it domestic, we will end up making the travel from Mozambique to South Africa cheap. So there are a lot of things which we start, we have to think, and after COVID scenario should allow, enable us to start reinventing our way of discussing then how to overcome the current problems of connectivity in Africa. Thank you very much. Just to, to add, and uh, I, I agree with, uh, with Emmanuel, and I, I will bring a, an example in terms of the connectivity. Uh, in a region that is very similar with Africa as well, uh, you need to start to open the markets by regions, by regions, in, in internal regions, because if you have a visa for go to the country A to B, it's also a difficulty because it's costly and it's not effective for you to go to the country A to B. In Latin America, you have the Mercosur approach where you can travel with your ID. You don't need to have a passport to go to the neighboring countries in some specific countries in the region. And that helps to people travel more. That's right, there is a city in Argentina that they call Brasilote because there's more Brazilians in the city than even Argentinians because that's the case. And also the Argentinians that goes to Brazil as well. So basically, these openings of the market that you facilitate is easy for people to travel, no need of visa, no restrictions, help to the people travel more and turn the flights, and turn the, the flights less expensive because you have more demand 
supply and demand is always the same. If you have more supply, you have a more, if you have more demand, you have more supply, the price goes down. If it's different, the price goes up. If the price goes up, you cannot compete anymore. So I, just one example. Just in a quick note, uh, it, Open Skies is, uh, it's easy said than done, to be honest. And uh, it, it involves governments, it involves uh, airlines, it involves uh, airports. For us as airports, we love to have it. <clears throat> but for airlines, they would always, you know, fight it back, especially if it is the hub airline. But if it is for you to go somewhere, yes, you will, you will uh, want it to enjoy it. There is another thing, before going to the uh, 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 Open Skies, something called fifth freedom. And that actually is step one before going to, uh, to open skies. But uh, open skies is, is a complex issue. It's like between countries. Countries needs to have uh, laterals. You know, what is it for me? What is it for you? And how we deal with each other. But uh, end of story, I think we really, all of us, need to work on the open skies. It will benefit the uh, air travel uh, ex experience and, and, and encourage people to travel. Like uh, your example, uh, Felipe, in uh, the GCC, in the Gulf states, we go uh, open skies, except for Saudi, and we go with our IDs. And it's really making very good, you know, uh, movement between each other. Just to rebondir on what's been said, it's that the government arrive to surmount the fear il y a la protection de la compagnie nationale et ça c'est très important je crois que l'expérience du Maroc est très intéressante dans ce sens puisque le Maroc a décidé déjà dès 2006 de signer un accord d'Open Sky avec l'Union Européenne tout en ayant une compagnie nationale qui s'appelle Royal Air Maroc donc au tout début bien sûr on pensait que la rame allait mourir on imaginait qu'elle allait perdre toutes ses toute parts de marché et qu'elle allait déposer, je dirais, déposer les clés euh, et bien tout au contraire, tout au contraire, l'expérience marocaine a montré que, en tout cas, la signature de l'accord d'Open Sky a été extrêmement bénéfique pour le pays. D'ailleurs, le trafic aérien, si je ne compte que les cinq dernières années, je suis normalement, je dois compter l'évolution du trafic depuis la signature de l'accord d'Open Sky, on a connu une progression annuelle moyenne de plus de 9% par an. Et tout ça, c'est pour le bénéfice, je dirais, du, du, du consommateur, du client. Euh, du client final. Or, en 2019, on a atteint 25 millions de passagers. Tout cela, euh, je dirais, malgré cette... Euh, en fait, la signature de l'accord d'Open Sky s'est accompagnée par une cinquantaine de compagnies européennes qui ont commencé à opérer sur le Maroc sans aucune restriction, ni de capacité, ni de fréquence, etc. Et, euh, et donc, euh, la compagnie nationale a dû réinventer son business model pour faire face justement au changement de ce paysage concurrentiel. Et donc je pense que si l'ensemble des pays africains réfléchissent un petit peu, en tout cas prennent, pourquoi pas, le Maroc comme exemple, euh, se rapprochent, que les compagnies aériennes nationales se rapprochent les unes des autres pour échanger leurs expériences, pour dire voilà ce qui a marché, voilà ce qui n'a pas marché, qu'est-ce qu'on peut, comment est-ce qu'on peut être, euh, comment est-ce qu'on peut servir, je dirais. Le, le, le client final sans pour autant déstabiliser les équilibres financiers. Je crois qu'il y a tellement de choses à partager, tellement de, de connaissances euh, qu'il va falloir juste aller de l'avant et, euh, et être courageux. Just 